Hello everyone and welcome to the Big Bash update. Another one just before the massive Australia India series. And the interesting thing is we have a lot of interesting Big Bash tonight. Scorchers vs Stars. That's 4 pm WA time, 7 pm Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time, 6 30 pm Adelaide time, and about 1 1 30 in India, I suppose, and 8 am in England. And that is a massive match. It's going to be interesting because you have Marcus Stoinis, who's from Western Australia, same with Hilton Cartwright, that they're often quite impactful players. Same with Nathan Coulton. They're all West Australians. And again, they're playing against their state. So that'll be very interesting. Nick, obviously, the Melbourne Stars without Peter Hanscom. Different side, completely different structure. Adam Zampa should be bowling, I believe, by now. And should be interesting because the Scorchers have a pretty good batting order as well. But they have had issues with collapse in the past. That's interesting. In other news, Strikers beat the Hurricanes. Thunder beat the Heat, chasing down the target miraculously. Like you fought five overs ago. It's a lot of games this Big Bash where you look back at it five overs ago and you think the other team's going to tog them. And then they win. It's miraculous. Same with Hurricanes versus Strikers. Not the one, not the second one that I have up here, but the first game between the two on Sunday. That was absolutely miraculous, that win. And it's just been an incredible Big Bash where sides have gone in and won from absolutely nowhere. It's like, how does this happen? This is why I love the game of cricket. It's just, you can't get over it. Also in cricket, some massive series coming up. So Australia v India tomorrow. I am live and free indeed. So that'll be very, very exciting. It will just be for the first session, given the fact I'm very, very busy. Also gonna look at the upcoming Big Bash matches, as well as the Australia India test. So firstly, last night, Big Bash thriller. So Adelaide Strikers beat the Hurricanes. So the Stars of Thunder versus Heat. So Chris Green, one for 42, got slogged around a bit. Probably the impressive 69 from Chris Lynn would have been something of just 44 deliveries. Jack Wildermuth for the back end, 31 off 11. And then with the ball, he got three for 23. Now, even though the Thunder won, I'm going to credit Jack Wildermuth and Chris Lynn. Jack's out for a duck. An excellent 46 from Ben McDermott. That was probably what held the inning free solidly. Alongside another 46 from Colin Ingram. Tim David, rising star, quite underrated in my opinion. He has done quite well indeed. And, of course, so, Mac Wright, 15, Tim David, 24 of just 15. Shame he left for Scorchers. They did, the issue with, though, is Darcy Short, he didn't really get going, only made two runs, which is a disappointment on behalf, on behalf of their team. But who bowled really well was Peter Siddle. Five for 16. An excellent bowling effort from Peter Siddle. Now on to the strikers. Phil Stoll out for just six. Jake Weatherald, an excellent 68 not out of just 48 deliveries. Matt Renshaw was out for two. Alex Carey made a decent 55. And yeah, there wasn't as much wicket taking and they made they had five wickets to spare. And I just didn't, they're just generally the top side in that game, the strikers. Unlike in the first game where they got really, really close against the Hurricanes, it didn't quite make it. 9 for 163 versus 5 for 174. The Thunder batting started with a bit of a collapse. They lost Kawaja for 17, which was a decent innings of just 9 deliveries. A golden duck for Hales and a duck for Callum Ferguson. They couldn't afford that. Alex Ross batted quite well with 34. And so did Baxter Holt. Ben Cutting as well hit a nice 29. But Daniel Sams, usually known as a bowler, he got 2 for 32 in bowling off 4 overs, then got 65 not out of 25. It was a fantastic innings from him, and it was absolutely impressive. Jack, even Jack Wildermuth couldn't stop him. And that's definitely what won the game for the Thunder. He's usually known as being a bowler. But Daniel Sams, just the way he attacked it, just fantastic. That was Monday night. Sixers versus Renegades. What a game that was as well. The Sixers hit 4 for 205. Josh Phillippe hit a massive 95. Again, another WA guy. In case you're wondering why the Scorchers lose, we sell all our good players away. Um, Jack Edwards was out for a duck against Hatsaglu. I'm just going to pronounce it like that, sorry. 2 for 40 or 4 overs, pretty good from him. He's from the university, I think, or something. 
Um, Jordan Silk had a nice 45 not out of 19 deliveries, and the Sixers produced 4 for 205 off 20 overs, and the Renegade just got knocked over very nicely. Stephen O'Keefe got a good free for 16. Ben Dwarshus got 4 for 13 of just 2.4 overs. Carlos Brathwaite, remember the name, got 2 for 12 of 2 overs. Yes, that's correct. And the top order collapse. Marsh gone for 13, chewed up the deliveries, 13 off 17. Finch, well, he was bowled by Stephen O'Keefe. Then Finch was dismissed for 12. Harper got out for one. Riley Russo, the international star, got out for a golden duck. Bo Webster out for two. Fraser McGirt got 13. Benny Howell got out for a duck. Cambridge Sinat got out for 13. I don't know about the structure of the middle order of the Renegades. Like, once you pass... The top four are pretty solid with Marsh, Finch, Harper, and Rousseau. But then you go to Webster, Fraser McGurk, and Benny Howell, and they're, well, to be frank with you, basically been hopeless this season. If you ask me, they're a bunch of youngsters, inexperienced. Like, there's too many of them around. There's not even any statistics about these players. They're just all people in their 20s. Just stuffing around for what? Benny Howell's like 32 years of age. He's just started playing. He hasn't really started a career properly. And this is how the Renegades need to restructure. And most of their good players are international stars or Josh Layla, Kane Richardson, bowlers. And their only good batsmen are really Sean Marsh, who's from WA, Riley Rousseau, who's from South Africa, I, I think. Um, Sam Harper and Aaron Finch are the only two vic- good Victorian batsmen in the Renegades. So the, the, their side's not the strongest. And the only the best way they can do is have a good top order batting. The Scorchers as well, like, they're doing okay because they have structure through. We sold all our players into state and we can still do well. Like We've still got good names like Josh Inglis, Colin Munro, Joe Clark from England, Mitch Marsh, Ashton Turner... Cameron Bancroft, Aaron Hardy, they're good names. They can actually bat decently. And the Renegades, look, they've got a pretty good bowling attack, which is how they need to win matches. Their top order batting and their bowling attack is excellent, but everything else, they're just screwed. That's how they beat the Scorchers. So that's the update on the Big Bash. Now let's get on to Australia v India. First test. And they've, the Aussies have said they're not going to announce the teams till the toss. Now, I don't exactly agree with that I think there's but there is a reason for it and that is the fact that Australia's batting um, has had issues such as how are they gonna score all these runs you know like they don't even know if Burns if if Cameron Green's able to play yet they haven't even told us I mean he said to debut but it's just so intense, injuries and stuff. They have added Marcus Harris to the test squad, but they're unlikely to pick him. It's all over the place. There's been a lot of injuries this series, and it's been very, very concerning on the basis. But Green is set to debut, and I think that would be a very, very good choice. Obviously, to find out, we've got it on the live audio broadcast. Now, I'm going to make an Alinta Energy team with you. So I'm going to pick, because I can't have Warner, I'm going to pick Burns. He's a bit old, a bit yeah, rusty, but I think he's still going to get the spot. Burns, Bukowski, of course, the obvious, Labashain. I don't get how Labashain was so poor at the start of his career. He was rubbish at the start of his career. Like, he could bowl and field well, but, like, he wasn't a great bowler or anything. And his fielding was good. He was basically picked as a fielder. Like, you don't often, that was because that's how far behind Australia was. He was rubbish at the start of his career, Labashain, and now I could almost call him in the top five best batsmen in the world. Maybe, that's very controversial. Maybe the top maybe the top 10 or top 20. He's just so good now. Um, I am very criticistic and I always speak my mind, and that's the thing about it. If players watch my reviews, they were, uh, and, it's, and it's nothing personal, it's just who I think is a good player. Smith at four, Head at five. Travis Head, like, you may have said, oh, he's not doing very well, but he's actually a very good leader. 
And I think I think the next Australian captain should either be Travis Head or Pat Cummins. To bat at number six is the perfect choice, Cameron Green. Now, usually I'd pick Michael Nessa. I don't know why I like him so much, Michael Nessa. But now that there's Cameron Green and he's twice as good, definitely Cameron Green. Number seven, wicketkeeper, Tim Payne. He's a good leader as well. Sometimes players need to be picked as leaders because cricket is a team sport, which is very, very important. Number eight, Stark. Number nine, Cummins. Number 10, Lyon. And number 11, Hazelwood. And for the 12th man, who I think back up, I'm going to pick a reserve because this is not Big Bash, but I'm going to put two X-Factor players. For batting, I'd say, as a reserve, Green doesn't make it, probably Sean Marsh. And push head up to six, put Sean Marsh at five. Or you can, and that, and the backup for that, and the second backup for batting would be probably the opener guy, Marcus Harris. But for bowling, my backup would definitely be James Patson. And my other backup would probably be Steckity. Now, now, the squad for Australia is Tim Payne, Joe Burns, Pat Cummins, Cameron Green, Marcus Harris, Josh Hazelwood, Travis Head, Moses Enriquez, Manus Labashane, Nathan Lyon, Michael Nezza, James Pattinson, Will Bukowski, Steve Smith, Mitchell Stark, Mitchell Swepson, Matthew Wade, and David Warner. India now. Virat Kohli will be captain for the first test only. He'll be very, very important for the team. Ajinkhe Rahani as vice-captain and captain after. Rohit Sharma, excellent player. Mayank Agarwal, Prithvi Shaw, K.O. Rahul, Shedeshwa Pujara, Hanuma Bahari, Shubman Gill, Viridi Man Saha and Rishabh Pant, both wicket keepers. Jasper Bumra, Mohamed Shami, Umesh Yadav, Navdeep Saini, Kuldeep Yadav, Ravindra Jadeja, Ravi Chandra, Nashwin, and Mohamed Siraj. Saini and Siraj might also be a chance of getting picked more than I. I mostly stay the same 11 as my full on preview that I made back in late November. I keep the same 11 for India. There's been a lot of injuries in the Australian camp. And yes, I think Shubin Gill is still the viable replacement to bat in Virat Kohli's spot. Otherwise, he shouldn't be playing unless Kohli's away. First test kicks off 3pm Eastern time, 12pm Perth time. A massive test match in the scale of things. Australia versus India. We will be live and free coverage of day one and the first session. Just the first session because I'm very busy and I have a life, you know. And... I'll probably do coverage of a couple of other days as well. At least another. I'll do. I'll find another day as well to do it. Maybe three sessions. I'll try. I'm trying to do full day, day two. No promises. Right. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.